Who knew that the cheapest gaming laptop from a Best Buy would be a tough gaming by Asus? Fancy. And it even comes with hexagons on the box, which as we've established are the gameriest shape. But first, a word from the sponsor that helped pay for the laptop. Today's video is sponsored by Deepcool and their new LT720 AIOs, which is a 360mm AIO infused with Borg Cube technology. Or if you have a smaller case, there's also a 240mm version. Built around Deepcool's new 4th generation high performance pump and compatibility with all modern sockets means the Deepcool Cool LT720 is a great choice for all your cooling needs. Get yours using the link in the video description. Thanks Deepcool for sponsoring today's video. Ooh, it's got some intel in it. Whoa, there's even more hexagons in here. This really is a high hexagon per dollar product. Good value. Terrible dad joke aside, that's pretty nice packaging. Look what we have under here. Not gonna mention it any further. Let's kind of lift this bottom out and see what do we get. Here we've got some hard drive connecting accessory action and some mounting screws, which is almost as exciting as the hexagons. It's not quite a one tug unsheath, which is a little disappointing. But then we do have a very nicely sized power brick. It's 150 watts and it feels nice and soft matte. And then finally on the base of the power brick, we have our Disney power port. Look at that. Hey, would you look at that? It actually looks like a reasonable gaming laptop. It may be hewn out of not very high quality plastics and look a little more gaming than I like, but for the amount that this costs, that's a reasonable looking gaming laptop. Although, one thing that I will say about the plastic is that it is not a fingerprint magnet. I mean, it is a little bit, but not nearly as bad as a lot of laptops. And then on the back, we have more hexagons, very good. We've even got some radiation warnings on here, so it seems like they use plutonium or something similar in the construction. Feels a bit light for something that has plutonium in it. Other than that, it doesn't have a glory hole on the back, which is a bit disappointing, but it looks like the back is gonna be relatively easy to remove, uh, which is important. On the back, we have some vents with actual heat sink behind them, another good sign. In terms of IO, on the left, we've got a whole bunch of ports. You probably don't have to worry about dongles with this thing. And on the right, we've got an extra USB 3 port and a Kensington lock. That's good. Let's see, does it pass the one hand open test? It does not, okay. It is relatively rigid to open. Wow, that's a bit of a poopy keyboard, but at least we do have a full numpad on the side for those of you that love to, to recreationally excel. It is all pretty cheap plastic. Like you can feel that this is a budget laptop just from the build quality, but it does come with a high refresh rate display, which is awesome. And we get a webcam. But with that, let's very irresponsibly try and open this laptop before we test it. I just feel like this is already more effort than it needs to be. I know that it's like standard or whatever to spend three hours screwing to get your laptop open, but it doesn't have to be like this. Go. It's always some yummy crack sounds. Oh, it's coming. Oh, there's already a clip broken off. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so the breaking is is out of the way. That was not the nicest process, but at least the back's off, and it wasn't as destructive feeling as it often is with these laptops. That is a reasonable laptop booty. It does come with an M.2 drive in it, which is awesome considering that some Best Buy reviews said theirs came with a very slow mechanical hard drive in it. So this is a great step up from that. We even have an additional M.2 slot. So 
we can drop another SSD in here without having to sacrifice the drive in here. That's really cool. As you can see under here, uh, there is just a blank space. So we just have a single stick of RAM, which is probably gonna curb stomp the gaming performance. We'll see how much later in the video, but for the price, can you really expect more? And at least you can upgrade it after ruining the laptop's innocence, but you still can. We also have a reasonable looking cooling solution on the laptop, which is good. And we don't have particularly high power parts in here, so temperatures may not be that bad for a laptop. In terms of those specs, CPU-wise, we have an Intel i5-10300H, which is borderline geriatric at this point, but maybe it performs fine. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, then we have a single 8 gig stick of RAM. And finally, GPU-wise, we have a GTX 1650 in here. So when all said and done, this may actually be able to do some reasonable gaming. Okay, so now I'm just gonna break the laptop back together and then we'll do some gaming on it. That is the softest power button ever, damn. Feels like you're squeezing into a pimple or something. Wow, the background on this laptop reminds me of the kind of pattern on like sneakers that people with social skills wear. It's actually so loud. So now let's see what kind of VD we have on here. Uh, I'm a, uh, yeah, we, we got McAfee. That's, that's kind of standard for a device like this. So you may have to de-Elma this device at some point. Uh, other than that, we have Adobe Express. Armory crate and then my Asus. Oh, this is like the uh, support thing. So if something breaks, you can you can chat to an AI chatbot on here, probably. I mean, honestly, the whole VD situation on most of the devices I've looked at lately haven't been that bad, actually. I guess it's because I haven't looked at a Dell, Acer, or HP system in a while. But anyway, okay. So the VD situation is not that bad. And then here we have our single 8 gig stick of RAM. It's running at 2933 megahertz. And then here we have our 512 gig Intel Pecnus SSD. Yeah, I mean, this is just laptop stuff. Okay, so uh, let's, let's plug a mouse into it and do some gaming. This is GTA 5 at 1080p with everything on normal settings. So it's it's basically the lowest that the game goes. And I mean, it's it's running fine. Like we're we're not quite making use of our high refresh rate panel in here. I, I just noticed our GPU isn't really doing anything and it seems like the CPU is part of the problem. Uh, you know a CPU is a beast when it bottlenecks a GTX 1650, uh, but it may be the RAM configuration because, again, we just have a single 8 gig stick of RAM in here. So we'll, we'll upgrade that in a bit, but, you know, first we want to we try some games. Temperature-wise, it's not terrible. At, at least the GPU isn't terrible, but I guess, I guess it's because it's not really doing much. Wow, that, that CPU really is bottlenecking the little 1650 hard. <laughs> it is. 1650 is not doing much. And it's, it's quite stuttery. It, it has these moments of clarity like this where the frame rate's decent. And then re really heavy stutters set in. So with Battlefield 5, single player kind of worked. But the moment you click on multiplayer, it crashes every time. That's the third time in a row it's done that. I've not seen Battlefield 5 do that before, so that's a little weird. Um, I guess let's try another game and then we'll come back to it after we upgrade the RAM because maybe that's the problem, maybe? Okay, it's settling in around 30 frames per second it does dip quite readily down to about 22 24 frames per second i mean i guess it's fine right it, it's still borderline usable let me go turn fidelity fx on oh they've upgraded to 2.1 that's fancy oh obviously that wouldn't really help because the gpu isn't the performance bottleneck Reducing the render resolution isn't going to help much because the CPU is the problem. I really hope the RAM upgrade is going to save this laptop because gaming performance wise, it's not doing that well. 
So let, let's let's see. Let's give it a try. Okay, so it's only running at 2666 megahertz, uh, but it is dual channel and double the amount. So hopefully we'll be fine. Wow, that has made a huge difference. Our GPU is still being bottlenecked, but we're getting a lot more performance than we did before with our, our fancy new RAM configuration. Wow, that it's made such a big difference. It's running at like 120 frames per second now. A hey, Battlefield 5 at 1080p low settings is also very playable now. I think this is the biggest difference I've seen a, a RAM upgrade make in one of these pre-builds before. It's essentially doubled the frame rate in Battlefield 5 when it comes to the single player results. And considering that it's running multiplayer now, it's just, it's like infinitely better, right? That's a, oh, that's a big difference. Granted, this is with Fidelity FX on quality, but before, that didn't really make much of a difference. Whereas now, the fact that the graphics card isn't running head first into the CPU the whole time, with low settings using quality Fidelity FX, we are getting over 60 frames per second. It feels good, it looks nice. This is a very usable gaming experience now. And in terms of noise and temps while gaming, it's not that bad for a laptop. Although it does sound similar just on the desktop, which is not ideal. So at the end of the day, after the RAM upgrade, which is an absolute minimum requirement, the cheapest gaming laptop from Best Buy is actually pretty solid. You get a display that won't destroy your retina, reasonable gaming performance, and decent temperatures and noise for a gaming laptop. I just wish the keyboard was less, for the lack of a better word, shite. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel and maybe watching another video. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye-bye.